It's time to talk some horses. 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 Uh, as we only have now, what, two weeks to go before the Derby? Yes, sir. John Hardoon from the Braggers and Sheets, how are you? Good. Chad, how are you? Hey. You got any you got no AC there now? Nothing, no. What the what the hell, man? And he's in a good hotel too. You can't oh, tell that's tell just... everyone over the air where he's staying because we don't want him to get any visitors. Completely unacceptable. Any rowdy listeners. How did did think about last week? Because the the horse that really stood out to me last week was that uh, Skelly horse. I mean, man, is that horse impressive. Are we going to see Skelly like at the Breeders' Cup for any protect, any kind of race? If he stays in one piece, I'm sure you'll see it. Where would he be in? Sprint. Breeders' Cup sprint. So he he's never been in a Breeders' Cup race before. It only happened once a year. Well, how, well, if you're what five years old, that means you you would have only had what one or two two. One shot one at one shot it, before that. Five, okay, so last year it didn't work out for him. Well, he only had a grade three. Well, last two year, years so. you would have had. You could have had. He could have run as a three year old. Okay. Yeah, well, he was running fours and sixes and another four this year. Where did he run last week? Did you, did you get that? Do you remember that? Uh, Must have been blazing team. fast. I'll look so, it up. To anyway. Running. Skelly was the talk of it. What did you think about the Lexington and anything in the Lexington? Uh... Who won that race? Yeah, exactly. Encino. <laughs> Encino won the race. Oh, yeah. The horse never ran on dirt. The Cox horse. He ran, horse, that was he ran well. He yeah. is uh, He is officially knocking around in the Kentucky Derby and is going to point for the Preakness. Is that official? Um, it's unofficially official. Okay. Thank you. All right. And we oh. want to let everybody know right now. Well, excuse me, he's running in the Preakness? That's the plan, but that was also the plan with uh, Lexington winner first mission from last year who didn't get the uh, surrogate. Okay. We want to let everybody know uh, what our plan is. Actually, we, we, we went over the plans without you, Chad, so hopefully you'll be able to confirm them here. Um, but uh, our plan is, is that since the racing is pretty weak next week, and there's going to be a big day on Friday and Saturday, of course, the week after, that we will do uh, no racing, no programming next week, but we'll make it up to you Kentucky Derby week. We'll have bonus coverage because we've got the big day on Friday and, of course, before the Derby, so we'll have more than enough racing between Friday and Saturday to pick out you know, four races in two days. So we're going to do the double duty uh, the week of the Derby, no racing, no on this channel next week. So we'll make it up to you for Derby week. So uh, you good with that, Chad? Whatever you guys want. Uh, by the way, Skelly ran a four. four another four. Four. All right. Well, not not quite the zeros that mind your biscuits used to run, but that's okay. <laughs> or the impressed. twos, or the twos that mind your biscuit used to run. Not impressed at all. Okay, so today we have ourselves two races. We have one from Oaklawn and one from uh, Keeneland. And uh, let's go ahead. Uh, we'll uh, take a look at maybe some of the uh, viewer comments later on. But let's go ahead. We're going to start uh, with Keeneland first. Uh, and is this the track you said you did like or didn't like? Or is that Oaklawn, John? I like every track. No, oh, this track has okay. been very speed biased, speed favoring the last since they opened, really, to tell you the truth. And uh, personally, on a personal note, I do my best on an even track or closes. I don't like when tracks are uh, dominated by speed. All right. Just my opinion. Well, in this race, the Ben Alley, a grade three race, a mile and a th uh, three sixteenth. Uh, you've got about 515 Saturday post time. Four year olds it up. And you've got a two-to-one shot. Uh, Kings Barnes is the Louisiana Derby winner last year. You've got Smile Happy, uh, who actually won the Alice Sheba last year with a five on the sheets. He's three to one. Four to one, you've got War Campaign. So those are the top three. Let's go through the list, though, starting at the top. Time for Trouble. Pratt on board, John, at six to one. Seven-year-old. Uh, 50%, though, first or second career-wise is pretty impressive. 
two tens to start the year. Now, that was at Oaklawn. We're going to talk about Oaklawn next, but this is Keeneland. Uh, still, he's got a win over two races at Keeneland. And overall, on dirt, he's been pretty good uh, and also one for one at this distance. So what about six to one shot time for trouble? This is my top selection. I like the ride Ooh, with Butch and I like the first and second and two starts at Keeneland. I like the fact that he's breaking from the rail. And uh, I think he's going to run well. This is my top selection. Do you agree with that, Chad? No, I think he's just a horse. I think he's fine. I think he's just run okay in the past. Um, he was well beaten last time. I just, I think, uh, it's just not for me. It's just not my kind of horse. Okay. Uh, the two, uh, this horse... I, I, now, I'm surprised that this horse says uh, Shirley Furious is 10 to 1 because he's over 9 on a fast dirt track and he's over 2 at Keeneland. He hasn't raced on a dirt track since last October. Seems to be decent on synthetic, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I doubt you're touching this horse, John. No, he's too slow and uh, his dirt races are not very good. So, correct, I am not touching this horse. He has one dirt race, if you can get back to the race in West Virginia, that was actually pretty good last year. And in a race full of uh, suspects, um, un, uh, you know, a lot of horses that don't show up in this race, I'm actually going to make this horse my top selection. Oh, holy Victoria. moly! I, I just have a feeling he's going to run a really big race, um, and I trust him more than I trust others. I know he's gotten beat 50 lengths on the dirt in some other races, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a swing here on, on this horse. Wow. Okay, interesting. Well, again, you know, the long shot, by the way, the long shots we picked last week, uh, the Philly ran second at Big Odds in the Apple Blossom, and the the Colt was third in the Lexington at Big Odds. So, you know, mm -hmm. for those those you know using those those horses underneath, they were they were rewarded. Yeah, and again, keep in mind uh, the numbers, the sheet line for this horse has ranged from eight to twelve on synthetic. Um, last time out on dirt was fourteen, but before that, uh, August of twenty three. Surely Furious did run a seven on dirt. That was at oh, that the, West that's Virginia the race. I'm race. Getting back to in West Virginia. All right, the three is Smile Happy. We've known this horse for a few years, back in the Derby days of 2022. Uh, the favorite, Morning Line favorite of the blue, actually the post time favorite of the Bluegrass, come in second that day to Zandon. Uh, disappointed in the Kentucky Derby, and ever since then. Um, he's had one really good race, and that was the Ali Sheba, as I mentioned before. Ran a five in that race at Churchill Downs. But after the five, John, nine and two thirteens this year. Matter of fact, the last three races, Smile Happy has lost by a combined 24 lengths. And if you recall, he's somewhat of a mental case. Uh, he gets behind the gate, and uh, he usually holds post time up for about 10 or 15 minutes. And when he feels like getting in the gate, he does. And he's three to one. I want no part of this horse. I don't understand how he's three to one. That 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 to me was a little bit confusing on the morning line on this horse. Look, uh, there's a couple of things. One, uh, being that today's Thursday, what's that thing on Twitter? They go throwback Thursday. I'd love to find the old comment of everybody that that told me I was crazy when I told them that this horse was nuts before the Kentucky Derby, and I, I and he wasn't lame, and he was lame, and that's fine. Look, there's an interesting there's an interesting thing about this horse that needs to be mentioned. He's first time gelding. Whoa. Um, I didn't when even you have that. when you have a horse who is as crazy as he is, there's the chance that gelding him could turn the light bulb on. Now there's also a chance that it's the final straw and he's just never the same. He's actually entered in the sale on next Friday at Keeneland. So, you know, it's it's this is a very interesting race. Chad, Chad, can I ask you a question? How many millionaire horses do you know that they geld after earning a million dollars? Not many, but there's also not many that refuse to go to the starting gate <laughs> as much as this horse does. Look, <coughs> it's a difficult decision. I mean, he's a great he's a great true winner, right? I mean, so yeah, and if they're putting you know, him in the sale next week, why were they in such a rush to geld? Him? Probably could have probably could have stood him somewhere regionally, maybe. Although I'm sure they exhausted those options and nobody wanted him, being a son of run happy. Um, and kind of what he's what he's he's done. Unfortunately, his antics have 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 stopped him. People don't want to breed to a crazy horse. Um, so here's the thing on this horse. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you may have to use them in your multi race wagers. If you're using this as a standalone race, you have the chance to see him on the track. If he's behaving himself, 
he might be worth a couple of dollars as a saver bet. But the problem is, to me, his antics were his antics. So Kennedy Peak took him to the farm. He trains off the farm. He ran his last couple races off the farm. He's gelded now. I would have preferred them to try and stable him where Kennedy Peak has a string and get a work or two over the track and see what he's doing, see what he's adjusting. Instead, they've just kept him in Florida on the farm, and he's shipping up from Florida. So he remains, uh, you know, the Wizard of Oz here, a giant mystery as to what's going to happen in the race. But you do have to know, look, if he wasn't a gelding, if, if they didn't make any changes at all, it's an automatic toss. I agree with you, John. But the fact that they did geld him, you do have to at least pay attention and see if he's acting any differently. All right. So that does seem, well, we're obviously going to pay full attention because uh, being at the track is going to be a, an advantage for sure then with Smile Happy in this race. So if you're not at the track, is there any way to kind of do yeah, these? If you watch, if you you watch, watch the track the, feed. You yeah, watch, you watch the track, track feed. feed. Yeah, if you watch the track feed. On the computer, you watch your track feed. That's and to be honest with you, you can go on YouTube to Keeneland.com and they have a live stream of all their races. Okay. So they have the track feed, they have the track feed at YouTube.com. If you type in Keeneland, they have the live, the live feed at Keeneland. Um, every every race day from start to finish. Cool. All right, next up uh, is the Morning Line favorite and uh, deserves to be, in my mind, I think this is uh, clearly the horse to beat, even though it doesn't have a sheet number in the, in the single digits, though, so that's definitely um, a vulnerability there. But Kings Barnes, Todd Pletcher, uh, coming off the win uh, and running a 10 this year, ran a 10 to end the year, so he's back back-to-back 10s. Did win the Louisiana Derby last year, and then uh, did not do much in the Kentucky Derby. But now we're talking about a two to one. Matter of fact, this has been pretty much the price the last couple of starts. So, what do you think? I I, I guess this is just too short for you, John. Right? I mean, I'm using him because I'm keying a six to one shot, but I would never key this horse a two to one. Yeah. No way. Look, the, the thing the thing about this horse is, like John mentioned, the bias of the track. This horse goes into the bias of the track because you know with Louis Sayers aboard they're going to be aggressively ridden to try and make the lead okay. and I think because of that you have to use them I don't like this horse and it's funny on a morning line because this horse won the allowance race he's 2 to 1 and we'll talk later about it on a horse at Oakland that lost an allowance race that's 15 to 1 so it, it's it's funny how this works I don't think that I've, I've never been a huge fan of this horse he walked around the track in the Louisiana Derby, and the uh, it, it looked like uh, something from World War II because the French Connection were 1-2, walking around the track in front. After that, he got really, really skinny. Um, I don't know if he colleged or something happened to him, but when he ran at Mammoth, he looked awful. He needed a break. Um, you know, some horses get a break, you know, just to get a break. He needed a break because he was spent. That that road to the Derby last year, shipping a fairground, shipping a Churchill, um, you know, every horse handles it differently, and that horse... He kind of fell apart by the time he ran in the Derby and, and, and kept going. He just wasn't the same horse. So he needed the time off. Good to see him back in the winner's circle here, winning the allowance race at Gulfstream. But I wasn't really super impressed with that effort. I thought it was it was workmanlike. And like I said, you have to use them just because of how the track oh, is. Yeah. But I don't love this horse. Okay. Well, that's good uh, to try to make some money on this race for sure. Let's go next with Laughing Boy, who's won four out of 31 races. That's 12%. That should uh, pretty much mean uh, we should look somewhere else. Um, and here's another thing that's interesting. 37% of his races have been in poor weather conditions, which is not going to be the case at Keeneland. It will be at Oakland. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But, yeah, this horse hasn't run anything. I, I, the best race was actually the last race when he ran at 12, John. Yeah, I mean, he's six years old. He's not getting better. You know, he does have David Jacobson, who wins a lot of races. But uh, I don't think he makes the cut. He's a, a notch below. Jacobson was doing okay originally shipping out of town in Oakland to start the Oakland season, and then he kind of really cooled down. Hasn't had as much success shipping anymore. Uh, this horse gets credit for the stakes win last time. The worst DQ of the entire season so far. Um, there's no reason he should have been put up. He was clearly second best and was not even close to being better than Messi on that day. Uh, awful DQ. Um, so comes into the race with backwards momentum. I don't. I don't think he's that good, and I don't think he's going to be fifty-three to one odds that he was last time. He should be even longer because this race is much, much tougher. Interesting. Okay. I agree. So they disqualified Messier in this race last. <laughs> yeah. If, if yeah. you guys have time, go back and watch that. I, I don't know what they were looking at. That was. They made a couple of horrible calls this year. This one was right up. That there. was. That. That was. <laughs> 
you know, there, there's those people that that cry that they should have all the stewards in the middle of Kansas making these calls and watching the replay of that race. That that'll do it to you. And there was no, and they don't have to explain themselves. Yeah, they no. do. They say we we this is why we feel, and that's it. They're the judge, jury, and executioner. All right. All now here's a long shot that might uh, be worth taking. Archie the Giza, Archie oh. the Giza. At 30-1, to 1, gets an upgrade with Velazquez for the first time. Coming off an 11, John, in a win and an allowance win at this distance. And um, I know it's a big jump in class, but you are getting 30-1. to 1. And he's better than five other horses in the race. So it's not the worst idea to use this horse somewhere on the bottom. I don't think he's good enough to win. But if you're looking for a bomb and you try the supers, this would be the guy to be using. And Chad, he did bit. run at 11 in November at Churchill as well. Yeah, but just a little bit of a class test. I mean, I know he's coming in off a of victory, but that was in an A of an allowance race. These horses are much more proven than he is. You know, it, look, it takes a special horse to win a stakes race first time. So I, I wish they had a stat for that. You know, they have stats for everything. I never see uh, the horse's percentage that they win first time they run in a stake race. I, I'd be interested to see what it is. It's very tough to do, okay? And, and this is his first attempt at a stakes. I, I just I prefer others in here. All right. Next up is Dynamic 1, an 8-to-1 shot. Not, uh, I think that number might be uh, a little bit generous. But that you got you got Pletcher and Ortiz Jr., so that probably explains it. The last four races have only occurred in the last 19 months, so not a lot of uh, racing activity for Dynamic 1 lately. Coming off a 10 at Tampa and a lot of losing by a lot of lengths. So this horse ran a, a, an eight and a six in 2022, uh, but we haven't seen anything close to that since. So yeah, I, I, I don't I, I don't know. This horse really not at eight to one, right? Not for me. No thanks. This horse was also entered in the sale next Friday at Keeneland, where he should sell for forty thousand claimer that he is. Uh, I I do not understand at all why I read Ortiz stays in town to ride this horse. I understand he rides a lot for Rapoli, but Rapoli's not putting him on fierceness. And I would say, if you want me to ride this horse, you better put me on fierceness. This horse is not a very good horse. He's shown that he's not a good horse. He he, he should he should be 30 to 50 to 1 in this race. And the only reason why he's not is because it's Ty Pletcher and I read Ortiz. He's not a very good horse. I'm sorry. Well, he he, he at one time was, but it's no, two years at one ago. Time no. he ran, at one time he ran a good number. He was never a good he horse. He was never a good horse, and he hasn't run a number in two years. Two years. Yeah. No. All right. Uh, the 8 is Happy American six-year-old horse at 15 to 1 uh, another horse that uh, had better days uh last year when he was running eights and nines but the stretch of the last what six races have been pretty bad he has run a couple of 11s during that time but the last two races were 14 and 17. yeah i don't like him he's too slow he doesn't have a number good enough and the way this track's playing it does not play to his advantage at all no. he'll be out the back door i don't like this horse War Campaign's going to round it out. The 4-1 to one shot gets big upgrade with Gaffleone for the first time. Coming off a second-place finish in the first graded stakes race. You just mentioned that, Chad. So that was a graded stakes race for the first time. Came in second. That's pretty good. Ran a 10 in that race. Matter of fact, the last four races, this horse has gone 9, 13, 9, and 10. 4-1, uh, to one, though. Uh, that number's uh, not where we want it. And the horse has never won at Keeneland. No, but he has two seconds. It's, listen, he's five years old. He's in pretty good shape now. He's in pretty good form. And you're right. He is getting Gaffley on. I would use him underneath at best. Well, I, 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 I think the one thing that stopped me from picking this horse on top is he's winless at Keeneland. He's, he's run, I think, was it four or five times? He's, he's four times. You four know, times. Two, two seconds. Keeneland is very much a horse. It's like Saratoga. We don't talk about it that much because... It's only a 15-day meet, and a lot of horses don't run four times in their career there. Um, but horses that like that track seem to run well. Horses that don't, don't. And, you know, he's he does have a second, uh, but that's the one thing that stopped me. You know, Gaff Leone, uh, he takes that mount instead of coming to Oakland to ride Skippy Longstocking, which is interesting. Um, I'll, I'll give him a, a chance to hit the board, uh, but tough to trust a horse who was 0 for 4 at, at, at Keeneland. All right, John's going with the one time for trouble. What else you doing, John? Exact is over the three four nine. I'm throwing in the three only because he's a new gelding. So what the hell? One over three four nine. Chad, Chad? I'm gonna take the two at a big price, and I'll just I'll I'll, I'll save with with smile happy just in case, and and I'll use Kingsmart because of the track, and 
I mean, you can use the bottom horse if you want to, just because. But it, it it's uh, it's it's not a race that three, I. Would, you're two with three, four, nine. Is that correct? Yeah, but it's it's not a race that I would I would play too heavy in. And Greg, you're I'm, up. I'm going to go with the four, but I'll go ahead and try to make some money with the four on top of the one and the six. Okay. All right. Now, before we get to Oaklawn, uh, quickly going to go over some of our viewer comments, uh, starting with our Patreon comment from Richard Buckler. Quick question for Chad next week. I was just going through USA Dirtbred Imports into Saudi. Does he have any idea of what's happened to the horse Commissioner Dan? It won a maiden special weight at Keeneland in April in 2023, then went over to Saudi. Just wondering if he had any clue what's happened to that horse. I know he mentioned it on a video earlier this year. Yeah, I was a big fan of that horse. I actually, I wanted to buy him at the April sale uh, that we're talking about that these horses are in uh, next week. Um, it was kind of disappointing. He, he ran, he went, he was imported to Saudi with uh, the goal of trying to get to the Saudi Derby. Uh, he ran in a couple allowance races, kind of disappointed. Um, I spoke to Connections actually after Richard sent that message, and uh, they said he's still there. He's in Saudi. Um, they're just hoping that he has a uh, a better year next year, and uh, possibly might end up with a new trainer uh, over there next year. Uh, but they're just they were they were disappointed with the. Uh, was a campaign expected a little bit better performance from him uh but he's gonna say he's gonna stay there they have a, a summer season in saudi that they don't have in dubai uh it's actually in the mountains in taif which is an uh, interesting uh interesting thing uh possible that we might see him one time in the summertime but they, they were disappointed uh he's sound he's happy he's okay um they're just hoping for a better year next year all right and then uh richard buckler aka rockface as we turn our attention to youtube comments rockface has a message for john for next week i'm not in the uk i live offshore but in the uk slash europe there seems to be a push by the industry to start pushing times as a big factor to look at i think it's useless on uk euro tracks but in the usa i'm starting to think it's imperative to understand them with horses as two-year-olds could you give us a brief idea of what this buyer system is and this rag is in data and what the difference is and why it's important to understand them well, they're both speed figures. The only difference is that Ragusins is, is a lot more accurate. They put a lot more into their formula uh, to come up with the final number. And what goes into making the number is uh, they put in ground loss, weight, wind. They get wind from the airport, from the closest airport. They get uh, track variant, and uh, those are the main components and a few others. I don't know how Buyer comes up with their their numbers. I think they're done mechanically. We also hand time every race because uh, a lot of times the times are wrong and they, they blow the time. So, you know, when you're buying the sheets, you're paying $40 for a set of sheets. So obviously um, you're getting a lot more in that number than you would in getting uh, the Buyer number. All right. Now, Mrs. Stevens says thank you chad for bringing insight into the complexity and depth of the doping problem it's killed the local tracks where i'm from so sad that's mrs yeah. stevens it's, uh, it's something that we're gonna have to talk about soon maybe after the triple crown yep uh, and, and then finally ed burke i enjoy your show the passion and love for racing is alive still sometimes john kind of steps on chad when he speaks <laughs> But it's his passion for the game. Makes it acceptable in my eyes. John knows his stuff too. Like John, I'm an older guy myself, worked in racing for over 40 years. Chad, I wish you well on all your horses. Your insight from the backstretch is great. The host, Greg, isn't so knowledgeable on racing, but tries to keep the show moving forward. Maybe when the show is on, you guys can turn off the cell phones. Ed. All right. So anyway, just so Ed knows... Uh, yes, uh, I'm not as knowledgeable as these two, but it's all relative. You know, you put me in a in a in a in a you know in a room with your average sports guy, and I'm pretty knowledgeable when it comes to horse racing. So uh, that's correct. And you've you've learned a lot, and you've only been doing it. A, I don't know. 10 I've years. only been doing thoroughbred handicapping since we've been talking. Right. So. I, I was into the trotters. I grew up at the Meadowlands. So I was into... Uh, Everyone starts at the Trotters for the most part. Yeah, I remember the days of the, the great horses like Nihilator, Nihatross. I mean, I was there. I was there. I mean, I wish I had videos and pictures uh, of... Uh, of I was you know, a little guy uh, being picked up 
uh, and, and on, on, on right there uh, at the finish line. It was packed. It was just a great time to, to, in the uh, yeah. in, in that industry. The, the only good thing I can tell you about the Trotters is it's very easy to go into the winner's circle. You just act like you know somebody, and you have no idea who anybody is, and just walk in the winner's <laughs> circle. We do that at the Red you Mile. You do that in the thoroughbred industry, well, too. Well, maybe, but, but it, I mean, you just you start, ha, 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 you're just like. Yeah, high five. High five. When everyone's high five. The driver, you have no idea who they are. You're just walking in the winner's circle. We, we must have done that a, 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 you know, a dozen <laughs> times at, at, at the Red Mile when we were in college. All right, let's talk Oakland. <laughs> let's talk Oakland Park. A mile and an eighth. This is the Grade Two Oakland handicap, and this is for four-year-olds and up. This should start about ten to seven on Saturday. All right, you got five horses between three to one and five to one, and that does not include instant coffee. I tried instant coffees in this race at fifteen to one. So uh, a very interesting race to handicap here. Seventy percent chance of rain. So keep that in mind. As of now. All right. We'll start with the one, John. Highland Falls, a 9-2 to two shot. Ran a 6 at Fairgrounds in January. Uh, had three wins out of four. And then, as again, an interesting first graded stakes race. Uh, didn't fare well. Finished fourth. But, you know, ran a 10. Wasn't all that great, but it's still a 10. What about Highland Falls? He's fine. He's a major player here. It's Brad Cox. It's Giroux. It's the rail. If the track is off, the horse is one for one on a wet track. And I don't believe he'll be nine to two. I think he'll be shorter than nine to two. I don't think the guy that makes the morning line at Oakland really knows what he's doing, to be honest with you. It's not an easy job, but he doesn't do it too well. And uh, the one is a major player. So a couple of positives and negatives on this horse. One, uh, Brad Cox wins a lot of races. He doesn't win a lot of races out, out on the West Coast. Um, this horse, he went from fairgrounds to California. Uh, they canceled the race. They brought it back on Sunday. Florent Giroux flew overnight with Brad to, to ride the horse. Uh, he was further back than I think he, they really like him to be. Not that he's a front runner, but I think they'd like him to be a little bit more uh, involved in the race. It's interesting. He actually got a lower seat number than Reincarnate, even though he finished behind Reincarnate in the race. Um, so there's things to like about him. However, he's a giant of a horse. I actually watched him school this afternoon. He's a big boy. And uh, the one post for him is probably a detriment because you're going to have to get out of there and he's going to have to, Florent's going to have to use him early to get himself into position because if he gets shut off, he's not a horse that you can kind of pick up your momentum right away. Uh, his mother, Round Pond, was a really big horse and he's a really, really big horse um, from a physical stature. So he's going to have to break really, really well. He's going to have to use himself a little bit early, which I don't think they really want to do uh on the horse so there's things to like but there's enough not to like as well okay next up is uh, i mean why explain why why is this horse in this race double crown so well, he's been in stake races the last eight nine every as a matter of fact he's been in a stake race every race every race he ran this year every race on the form shows a stake race uh, yeah. he keeps and now he's deep. trying to race a graded stakes race last time yeah. he did that he, he ran in uh, t uh october last year he, he ran a nine last november that's that's uh, that's the best we've seen out of him well he has 50 lifetime starts he's seven years old let him keep plugging away it's not Look, he, costing you any money he's won the, he's won a grade two before uh at aqueduct or belmont at aqueduct or whatever the hell they want to call it um he's owned by by our man norm Cass and Cash is king, and Norm Cash is chasing the cash. It's a one point two five million dollar race. If you run, if you run third, you make one hundred twenty five thousand dollars, which is more, which is almost more than you make winning the Bet Ally. So, um, you know, he needs to run every two weeks, and like a harness horse, you grew up in the harness game. This should be your top pick. He uh, he needs to find whatever stake race he's eligible for within a seven hundred mile radius of wherever he's stabled, and uh, this was the one that showed up. He actually just arrived. He arrived at Oakland. Uh, about one o'clock this afternoon, on Thursday. Is is Carmine Abotello, uh on board? The Red Man. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up is the three Magic Tap, uh, getting a very nice ten to one. Uh, you got Asmus in uh, the combo there, uh, and this horse in the last eight races has run between a nine and a twelve on the sheet. So very consistent. Has also shown uh, pretty well on the off tracks, uh, and you're getting ten to one, John. And he likes Oakland. He's stable there. And Asmussen's having a terrific meet. He's okay. Definitely. So, he was supposed to go to Keelan for the Ben Ally. Um, I know he was stable at Oakland, but that was the plan was for him to go to Keelan. 
I have a feeling because he ran last time the same day as Red Route One that they like Red Route One, and Red Route One is very much pace dependent. He's he's a deep closer. He's so a you rapper. see Keith Asmussen's riding this horse. He he hasn't really been forwardly placed. He's been kind of mid pack with with Tyler. I would expect maybe a little bit of change in tactics and, and look for him to show a little bit more early speed. But with that being said, I think he's in there purely to set it up for Red Route 1. I know it's different owners, um, but I just have a feeling that he's in there to try and help uh, it, keep it on his pace for Red Route 1. Excuse me, Chad. Winchell owns both of them. He owns Does Winchell own both of them now? Yep. Okay. So uh, I know it's Magistaps owned in partnership. But, but yeah, I, I, think he's, I think he's in there to – to set things up a little bit for Red Route One, just a, just a hunch. I don't. I mean, nobody said anything on the record or anything like that. Uh, but with the rider switch to Keith Asmussen riding for his dad, he's going to ride to instructions. I just I would expect this horse to be a little bit more forward than we've seen in the past. And I don't I don't think that he's he's good enough. You know, there's he's he's run one or two races that kind of you, you make him a fringe contender. You say, oh, you know, the light bulb comes on. But you know, he's had chances this year at Oaklawn. And he's just kind of been a plotter. I'm, I'm very familiar with the word plotter. That's what I had to deal with with Clapton for the whole winter time. He reminds me of Clapton. I just I don't think he's good enough. This horse is a notch below Chad's right. Yeah, I think so. Well, the interesting thing though is is that Magic Tap has three nines, uh, and uh, Red Route One has one nine. So, you know, interesting. Okay, next up, Octane. Magic, Magic Tap. Magic Tap also has earnings of probably about three hundred thousand, and Red Route One has earnings of more than a million. So I think I take Red Route One. A million five compared to <laughs> yeah. compared to four fifty. Yeah. Statistically, uh, his winning percentage is, is still is still not bad though compared to Red Rod One. Give him some time, but obviously you're right. All right, Octane is next, and uh, yeah, this is definitely a horse to contend with for sure. You're getting five to one. Uh, the sheet lines, by the way, have improved greatly under uh, Juan Alvarado. Uh, as soon as Juan Alvarado got uh, hold of this horse, you saw a seven, two nines, and an eight. The eight came last time out in a grade three win right here at Oaklawn Park. So what about, and by the way, La Peru was on board for the very first time. He's on again, John, and you're getting five to one. What about Octane? Well, he's a major player. He's improving with each start. He, not easy to ship in and win like he did. He shipped into Oakland and won that day last time out. He's certainly live in here, and again, it says five to one. I don't know if you'll get that price, but possibly. And he's. I think you get. I, I do think you get that price, John, because others are going to take money. Okay. And I, I, I know he won the Razorback two back, uh, but I think he kind of stay. I don't think he's as sexy as some of the other horses in the race. I think he might stay at five to one. But okay. he's a he's a horse that he loves this track. I watched him train this morning. He galloped with with a lot of energy. Um, he really, really, really likes his track. My not, my concerns on the horse is if he wants to go a mile and an eighth, which I'm not sure he does. And, you know, when he won the Razorback, things kind of went his way. He beat Magic Tap that day. Uh, and we just got done talking about Magic Tap. He's not – this race is ten times tougher than the race he won. Um, I know the numbers are going in the right direction. He's a solid horse and he likes the track. Uh, I'm going to – and obviously I've, I picked him a bunch, but I, I'm, I'm going to be against him on this day. But he does look – for those that like him, he does look really, really good on the track. Okay, now it's Red Route 1. Just talked about him. A 7-2 to shot. Rosario on board again. And uh, speaking of going in the right direction, John, it's exactly what the horse has done all three races this year. 13, 12, then a 9, all at fairgrounds here, of course, at Oaklawn. Does have a win out of five on an off track. Uh, and again, coming off of a grade two win last time out. Well, he's seven to two. And at seven to two, I really don't want any part of this horse. He's got to come from out of it. Things has to set up for him. And I think there are better horses that are closers in the race that are that have his running style that are a lot longer prices. So I don't think a seven to two is any value on this horse. If he's long, I could see using him. But if he's really bet and he's bet down to the way they have him picked at seven to two, I don't want this horse. Jackie Joe has already won this race last year. Report proxy. Uh, you should call this horse Moses because the seas parted for him when he went when he won last time out. I mean, you talk about a great trip. He had the trip of the century uh, when he won that race in New Orleans last time. Uh, I mean, credit where credit's due. Joe gave him a great ride, but I mean, I, I can't see him ever getting that trip again. It's very tough for a deep closer to get the trip that he got last time. Look, if I'm right. And there's more pace in the race than it looks like on paper. 
you have to use this horse because he's going to be he's going to be one of the confirmed closers in the race and he's obviously in good form that being said the last two times he ran against instant coffee instant coffee easily de- de- you know easily defeated him so you're getting 15 to 1 on instant coffee and 7 to 2 on red route 1 you, you, you go the the longer way obviously you're talking about two years ago and last year but Unfortunately, that's all you really have to go on on Instant Corfu's form, but he looks like he's the better horse than Red Route 1, to be honest with you. Yeah, let's keep in mind, this horse, Red Route 1, has four wins out of 18. That's uh, not a great percentage, considering... He's only one for five at Oakland. Yeah, and he's seven to two, so, I mean... the whole three, he's seven to two. So, I know he's not going to be, but let's just say, if he's, what, six to one, then you would consider him? Underneath, I mean, I don't, I don't really consider like any horse. It. I don't, I don't care what the odds are on a horse. It really doesn't make a difference to me. So I'm the wrong guy to ask about that. No, I'm not using him at that. I, I just don't like him in this spot. All right, reincarnate is next. The six, four to one shot, Baffert, and this horse does not have a single digit sheet number. Coming off an eleven at Santa Anita, that was a that was a third place finish in that Grade One race. Um, does not have a win. Uh, on and off track out of two attempts uh so yeah john you're getting four to one on a horse uh that is going to be over wagered on for sure well baffert hits about 40 percent, i believe on horses he ships into oakwood okay this is going to be one of the 60 percent that he loses with because i don't want this horse at four to one like you said he doesn't have a single digit you got at least five horses in this race that have run single digits and he's going to be one of the choices I don't want this horse at a short price. No, thank you. I think they send they send this horse with a little bit more gusto. He's a little bit more forwardly placed um, than the other ones. Look, they're chasing. They're trying to make this horse a stallion. He's got a good pedigree. They've chased the grade ones over and over again. Now they're chasing the money in the grade two. And so stallion making race over here. That's why he's here. I will say this, though. Um, from watching him before the Breeders' Cup last year, where he ran in a turf race that made no sense, to watching him uh, this afternoon, He's grown up from three to four. He looks much, much better. He looks like a typical Baffert horse. Ba- nobody's better, and, and, and nobody talks about this enough. Nobody's better at shipping a horse across the country than Bob Baffert. Shipping across country is not an easy thing to do, and he's got it down to a science. These horses ship off the plane. Um, and in this case, now they have to fly into Memphis. So they go California to Memphis and then van six hours from Memphis to Arkansas. <laughs> And they get off the plane like there's absolutely, like they like they went around the block. So Not they're, a they're, they're well they're well prepared and well conditioned. And so I'm not gonna knock him for his physical. He looks he looks tremendous as a physical. I just don't I don't know if he's good enough uh, against these better horses. He's run in Arkansas before, um, and really had no excuses. Had two trips before that were good enough to win, and and he he didn't win either of those races. Four of the last five horses are long shots with the with one uh, morning line favorites, and all of these horses or most of them are actually pretty uh, interesting. Guntown is next, the seven horse, a twenty to one. Yes, he's got the class jump, but the sheets, John, say that since his race in November, which was a seventeen, he's pretty much improved each race. This year, he ran a ten, followed that up with an eight, so he's really coming on strong. Uh, and you're getting twenty to one. Just, uh, just quickly on this though, and I and I do want to bring this up, and I don't. I, I like the sheets a lot, and I don't. I don't say much about it. The Aqueduct winner meet because of the weather and the wind and the way the track plays. Those numbers that come out at Aqueduct in the winter time always seem like they're faster than maybe they should be. They don't really seem like they balance out. So when you see a horse runs good numbers in the winter time. I mean, look, there have been times in the past where we've sold horses for a lot of money based on what those numbers were, so we're not complaining about it. But um, from a handicap standpoint, John, do you, have you noticed that it's it's tough to compare those winter those winter aqueduct numbers? The track uh, is, I mean, the variable the variable is so tough because I mean it can change from race to race, and it's so I mean, hard, so it's much so rain. Hard. It's, it's been tough. It's, it's it's very difficult to come up with a number for the aqueduct winter time. So I know he's coming in off that really good number. Um, he was claimed out of that race. And this is a much tougher spot. But I don't know that that number is a true number, just in my opinion, John. Well, it doesn't matter because even if it is an eight, so he figures the bounce. And if you think it's too fast, well, then he's too slow. So on either case, you have a right not to use him. I'm not using him. I don't give him any chance, not off the eight. I don't think he's running. 
Well, well I, I mean, he, show up. It, it was only a two point top from I understand. the previous. I just, and he did run an eight in twenty three in, in uh, last year, yeah. actually. Yeah, when when the rice trained them, there's a difference. Okay, so but but again, you get twenty to one. That's the okay. deal. That's the, that's the whole thing here. Yeah, not 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 five to one. All right, last samurai is also twenty to one. Uh, but uh, when this horse ran a seven in July, after that, I don't know what happened in that Saratoga race in the Whitney. Uh, but then, well, he was hustled into the race. He wasn't planning on running in the race. The race fell apart to a three horse race, which is or two horse race, which is how Wider Barrio ended up in the race, which is how uh, Giant Game ended in the race, and Last Samurai ended in the race. The race completely fell apart. This horse literally got here. You're supposed to be there for the for the Whitney like four days out. I think this horse might have got there two days out because. He was just getting his shit together. He wasn't planning on running in the race, and it really destroyed him. I mean, it took a ton out of him. They were not pointing for that race. Uh, they chased the money and chased the opportunity for, you know, trying to be third in a grade one like the Whitney prestigious race, and it really, really backfired on them. And, and they had to kind of go back and, 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 and hit the reset button, which I think we saw last last time out. But, I mean, I don't know that off that last race I'd be encouraged to, to want to move forward off of the last race. Well, Dad, did, did they sell this horse privately? It was no, no. Now no. it's Eddie, they just changed trainers. Yeah, the owner passed away, and they and they yeah. they've they, they've moved horses. They, the horses were originally they moved to the girl Jade Cunningham, and then um, for one reason or another, uh, they moved now to this guy. So well, the good thing is is you're getting twenty to one for a horse that's made almost two and a half million dollars. And I get the fact that those best races were uh, last year when he ran a six in February, a couple of eights. But I don't know. I mean, it, he did run a 16 at Oakland last time out. It wasn't a great effort, but at least it's heading back in the right direction. And again, you're getting 20 to one. So, all right. Uh, county final, the nine horse is 15 to one. Now, this is an interesting horse because of the fact that you, 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 you like the sheets on the synthetic races, which are eights, you did have a 13 last time. But again, you're getting 15 to 1. You're getting Safi Joseph. Uh, but this horse has only got one win out of nine on a dirt fast track. Uh, are you considering this horse at all as a long shot uh, with your exotics, John? No. I think uh, I don't think he's running. Now you're getting to outside posts. I mean, it's Safi Joseph who's also always dangerous, but he has the next horse in the race, Skippy Longstocking, also. Look, looks I, hundred times better. I think if this horse was a factor, he, he would have split them. He would have run County Final in the Ben Alley, and he would have run Skippy in the Oakland Handicap. The problem is, I think he knows that County Final can't, uh, aside from whether or not he runs on the dirt, which he did in 2022, um, I don't think he wants to go that far. So he doesn't want to go the mile and three sixteenths of the Ben Ally. I'm not sure he really wants to go a mile and an eighth of the Oakland Handicap. So um, not just the distance is a concern, but not just the surface is a concern, but the distance is a concern as well. Oh, wow. Ed Burke is going to be uh, very uh, unhappy with, uh, I think that was John. For keeping it, your... it rang through the computer. My <laughs> phone is off, okay? So don't blame me. Uh, next up is the favorite, Skippy Longstocking. I think we've talked about this horse like uh, 10 times. And why not? The horse is in a lot of big races, and the horse has done well in a lot of big races. So here we go again. Jose Ortiz, Safi Joseph combo coming off an eight. And that's about what the horse runs. It runs a lot of eights. Matter of fact, we've got six straight, either an eight or a seven. Uh, we got to, of course, forget minus about the two, minus the two double X for not finishing the. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, he never really runs a bad race, and he always shows up. So uh, other than the Pegasus, where he didn't show up and he didn't okay. run a good race, he was other eased. than the Pegasus. You're yeah, correct. everyone's entitled to a bad day. So what about Skippy Longstocking, Jonathan? Yes, he's a major player. I'm I haven't liked off him. He's going to be one of the favorites, so I don't want to key off him. But I'm using I haven't him. liked this horse all year. I watched this horse train for the Pegasus all winter at Palm Meadows. Um, I don't think he's the same horse he was, despite what the numbers say that he is. Um, his his race last time at Tampa was not as good as the race that he won last year in Tampa. Um, it was much better last year than this year, and he came back and ran awful in the Ben Ally last year. So I'm not sure why we think he's going to run much better off the Tampa win at Oakland. Uh, Tyler Gaffleon loses all confidence and doesn't ship over for the race, and I'm gonna I'm gonna toss him. I, I won't have this horse in my top three or four. I do not like this horse. Okay. All right. Well, I will put an X in my. Uh, you know, I was obviously considering him, but after that, Chad, I'll I'll listen to you. I'm smart. 
All right, next up, the final horse in the field. Got to be the bargain of the race. Instant Coffee, 15 to 1. Uh, now, yes, it's on its third trainer uh, in the last three races, but still, I, I remember us talking about this horse uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, won that grade two Kentucky race, followed it up with the win at the Lecompte. And then what happened basically in the Louisiana Derby? He got uh, hurt. Obviously, he's been away. So well, he didn't. He didn't get hurt. I think uh, ultimately, you know, the when you're sitting there with the point system in the Derby, it's very difficult to get a read. And you think you're in a good spot going into the Derby. You're six in the standings and points, and you think all you got to do is be one, two, three, four in the Louisiana Derby. And you know the French Mafia decides to go really slow in front, and they go three quarters and fourteen and change, and you can't make up that ground as a closer, whether you're Red Route One or your your Instant Coffee, and and you settle for six, and all of a sudden you you think you're going to the Derby, and then you're not. You don't have enough points to go to the Derby, and then your trainer tells you that first mission is going to win the Preakness, so don't even bother going to the Preakness. So you say, all right, we'll just freshen up from from three to four, and and that's that's the situation so you know it was it was a planned a planned vacation for him to come back the connections have been pointing to this race for seven months and i'm expecting a very big effort yeah the only thing we haven't seen out is the coffee is a race if it does rain uh is a race on and off track uh but you're getting 15 to 1 imagine a couple imagine last year thinking you'd get or a couple years ago thinking you'd get 15 to 1 on instant coffee and 20 to 1 on last samurai all right, gotta love it. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you this though, okay, Greg. To get instant coffee, what do you need? Uh, beans, and beans and water. Just add water. So if it rains, you're fine. It's instant coffee. <laughs> okay. Considering I don't drink coffee, I'm surprised I got that. All right, John, uh, you're gonna go with the one. One with four, ten, eleven. And Chad, I will be going with the eleven. Straight at no, uh, no nothing else, just the eleven to win. Whoever else wants to participate, they're more than welcome to. But uh, all out on the eleven. the eleven. All right, I'm going to go with the four on top of the seven, eight, and eleven. And that's okay. going to wrap it up. Next week we will not be here, so, but we'll be back in two weeks with bonus coverage of both Kentucky Oaks Day and Kentucky Derby Day. John, you're going to be where in two weeks? I'll be in Vegas. Okay, so we'll we'll I'll figure it all out. In. We'll be able to hook up, whatever it is. Yeah, okay. we'll figure it out. All right, guys. Stay Thank safe you. and be well. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Right, Thanks, Chad. All right, that wraps it up. Just want to uh, let everybody know, what, again, what the uh, summary of the picks are uh, for the race that we did to start the show at Keeneland, the Ben Alley. Uh, John... Uh, decided to go with the actually yeah John decided to go with the one in both races so he's got uh, time for trouble the six to one shot with Pratt on board along with the three four and nine Chad is going with the two he's going with the long shot surly furious and he's uh, yeah this is a very strange looking wager but you know Chad he comes up with these strange long shots every once in a while and they'll hit so um, anytime Chad has a long shot you got to play him so that's uh, the two. He's going over the three, four, and nine. I am going to take the four, Kings Barnes, and I know it's only a two-to-one shot. I, you know me. I don't play the uh, chalk very much, but I just uh, I think this horse is very impressive in this field, so I'm not going to screw around, and I'll go over the one, John's pick, and that's six, uh, Archie the Giza. Why not? Uh, he's run a couple of 11s. Uh, he's got Velasquez on board. I know it's a big jump in class, but that's why he's 30-to-one. All right. And the race we just handicapped, John again going back to the one, Highland Falls. And this is definitely the horse that uh, would concern me uh, since I didn't have him in my picks. Um, but I think that's because uh, Chad is probably right. You're going to see this horse go off. Or maybe, who knows? Maybe he's a favorite. Could be. Could be the favorite. And I just don't want to take this horse uh, at those prices considering I'm going with the four octane. Um, but anyway, John's going with the one. Over the 4, 10, and 11. Uh, Chad's just going with the 11. And uh, I'm sure there's uh, a lot more to that than he's leading on. But uh, bottom line is, it's a good pick as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I'm going to go 4, 
I'm going with Octane over the 7811. So I'm going to try to make some money with Guntown, who's trending in the right direction with those sheets. Last Samurai and Instant Coffee. Yeah, this is the race. Man, would I really like to w w make a lot of money in this race because I think there's a lot of money to be made in this race. We just got to get Highland Falls out of there and Red Route 1 um, and even Reincarnate. And I think uh, those horses are definitely, especially Red Route 1, uh, I know he's trending in the right direction. That does scare me. But Deep Closer winning back-to-back -back after four wins out of 18 career. Uh, that's asking a bit. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it would be nice to win with uh, with one of these. Especially Last Samurai, Instant Coffee. I mean, that would be really nice. But we don't always get what we want. That's going to wrap it up. Once again, we will not be back next week. So we'll have bonus coverage two weeks from now. And you want to make sure that you subscribe, though, on Patreon. $5 a month. Come on, man. $5 a month. You can't get better than that. I uh, want to remind everybody that until we get the goal, and we'll get there, 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Until then, all of our shows get posted on Patreon on Thursday. We do not then post in, on YouTube until late on Friday. And that's the earliest. And then sometimes we don't even post at all on YouTube. I'm sure you've noticed that. Um, other times we'll edit the show and only uh, post certain parts of the show. So there's that too. So if you want to make sure that you get all the shows all the time, as well as uh, the opportunity to get them on earlier in the week, uh, even if it's just you know 36 hours earlier, then it's five dollars a month on Patreon. But when we get to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, all of our weekly picks, the, like these shows, will be available on YouTube, right? just like we're doing on Patreon. But the difference is, is that we will be, because Chad just mentioned it at the top of the show, we were talking about doping in, this, in the sport. We are going to get into that and more. We're going to be producing some really cool professional news uh, videos in this in the industry and of course by having Chad as a professional trainer is something that we want to take full advantage of here on both of these channels of course uh, horsepower PSN the one you're watching right now or of course uh, on patreon but if it's YouTube it's horsepower horsepower P P PSN of course the PSN stands for prime sports network that's my other YouTube channel that's the main channel uh, in which we started at and I still will post matter of fact uh, probably um, I know I don't post them all the time on that channel but I will definitely be posting for the Kentucky Derby and the Triple Crown races um, but I'll do that like on Saturday uh, as uh, you know just an additional way to, to post and keep that channel live but anyway um, bottom line is is once we get the thousand subscribers it's all in on YouTube but if you want to watch the really cool newsworthy videos, Chad talking about doping, uh, the work I'm going to be doing when I come up and see these guys in, uh, in the summertime. It's probably going to be the end of August, early September. I'm going to put something really professional together. That's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait. Those types of programs will be available for five bucks on Patreon. So, uh, but that's uh, later on. I want to remind everybody, uh, once again, even if you're just watching on YouTube, subscribe. Come on, man. You got to at least subscribe for us. That goes a long way because, just like I said, it's going to go a long way for you, too. Because uh, the quicker we get the subscribers, the quicker we are on YouTube full-time. So, um, And also, like the likes, uh, the sharing of the videos, all that stuff is greatly appreciated. So for John Harduno, and Greg DePama, also for Chad uh, Summers, naturally, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in two weeks. If we record on a Thursday, which I'm not really sure when we're going to record that week. We could record earlier that week because we're going to get all of the, I'm assuming we're getting the sheets, the odds, everything earlier that week. So, you know, we could record uh, the Derby and Oak shows uh, a little earlier in the week than normal, which is, uh, you know, one, hey, bottom line is once we get the odds in the sheets for those big races that, that Friday and Saturday, as soon as we get them, the day we get them, we will be recording and posting. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in a couple weeks.